Hello my dear friends welcome back once again to my channel Lyceum of Politics friends today we shall discuss the idea of guild socialism okay so let's begin our journey and discuss guild socialism so my friends the theory of guild socialism arose mainly during the first 20 years of the 20th century okay and at its initial period, reference of it could be traced back in the writings of philosophers like Thomas Carlyle and others. Basically, the theory made a call for moving back to the medieval system of guilds, you know. That is, there will be a guild congress in the society which will take control of the entire economic functions that is going to happen in the society. This is the basic thing. So, from here, I think you can easily understand that just like other theories of socialism, guilt socialism was also opposed to the capitalist system, where the economic control of the society belonged to the capitalists. So, in place of that, they wanted the guild congress should take the control of the economic activities. Actually, guild socialism was often denoted as an intellectual child of Fabianism because the main advocates of this theory were initially supporters of English Fabianism but later some of them found the idea not so very convenient with the society and then they resorted to guild socialism. I will surely discuss with you in any other video the concept of Fabianism so that it becomes easier for you to understand. But for now, let's understand guild socialism first, okay? So, my friends, the main advocates of guild socialism were philosophers like A.J. Penty, Hobson, Tony, Russell, G.D.H. Cole and others. Okay. So, basically, guild socialism was a middle path between collectivism and syndicalism. I will discuss all these theories with you one by one. But for now, as we are discussing guild socialism first, let me tell you that what you need to understand here is that, that the guild socialists focused in organization and control of the industry by the workers themselves. In the book, The Restoration of the Guild System, A.J. Penty had clearly put forward the proposal of guild socialism. Thus, they denounced any kind of doctrine in which the production system is influenced or rather managed by any kind of political authority. So now let us have a look at the basic aims or rather the features of guild socialism. Now firstly, as I have been telling you that the guild socialists, they forced on the formation of guilds. Okay, but let us understand what guilds are. Now guilds were basically, if I can explain in this way, they were basically some self-governing associations that were formed in the society by the mutually dependent people who were living in the society and who were organized for a responsible discharge of any kind of function of the society. Okay. So now the guild socialism believed that depending on the nature of the activity that goes on in the society, there can be industrial guilds that could be formed and also some distributive guilds. Okay. Beside that, the guilds should also operate right from the grassroots level up to the highest level. And as a result of which, there will be the needs of formation of, you know, local guilds at the grassroots level, then regional guilds as well as national guilds. Okay. All this should be done according to the needs of the society. So, guild socialism also wanted to abolish the wage system in the industries, my dear. And the industries, according to them, were to be controlled by self-governance. And both manual labor as well as brain workers should be treated with equal importance in every industry. Okay. So, guild socialism also advocated for the formation of consumers council, which would work towards the protection of the interest of the consumer in the society in respect of the prices of different commodities and also the other issues. Now, the guild socialists do not treat the state as omnipotent, as you can understand by now. One group within them advocate for the total extinction of the state, my friends. But as you know, always there remains some difference of opinion among the philosophers. So, another group was present there who hold a different opinion. Okay. 
that is they put the state on the same footing with the guilds the state shall have its own business to manage like issues regarding administration education defense related activities these should be the areas of the state according to them but all matters related to production should be determined by the guilds yes my friends there were other opinions within these thinkers like some of them tried to treat the state as a supreme decision maker that is when it comes to any kind of conflict between the guilds in the society they say that the state should take the ultimate decision so you can say like this that there was no unanimous opinion regarding the state's role within the guild socialists okay but one thing they wanted that the control of the economic power the economic system of the society would be in the hands of the guilds in the hands of the industrial workers and not the political state okay so this was the common idea within all of them so my friends this was a very short video on guild socialism for you in a very easy and simple way if you like the video please press the like button and share the video with your friends and subscribe to our channel and as i always say till i come back to you never stop learning and keep on exploring bye bye see you very soon